Now, it's pointless for me to sit here and tell you about open source software, what it does and what it is. Many of you know much more than about it than I could even fathom. What I can tell you is my experience of open source, my colleagues' experiences, and why I think the open source community is in the current state it is, and what can be done about it. The fundamental survival and progression of any group, including OSSG, relies predominantly on the future of the group. And by this, I mean the up and coming generations, the people taking over. For me, I strongly believe that this is my generation and even the generation after me. And as many of you will agree, it's absolutely critical to get the future generations interested and involved in open source. And like a lot of the time, uh, when people talk about open source, although it extends to much more than Linux, that's certainly where it starts for most. Now, my personal experience with Linux is most likely similar to how most people went. I was always interested in it, but for a long time, I had no idea where to start. I didn't really have anyone to show me how, and I still grew up in a time where YouTube wasn't as prominent for teaching as it is now. None of my teachers at school really used Linux or showed any enthusiasm or recommendation into learning it and using it. Everything was focused on Java and Python. And the next issue was where to start and how to start. As a kid, you don't want to be wiping Windows off the family computer. Introduce the rise of VMs, virtual machines, which personally I think is going to revolutionize people's introduction to open source. But again, this is another seemingly scary thing you have to learn in order just to get a working system. When in reality, it's actually not that hard to figure out, but it certainly served as another reason to procrastinate learning Linux for me. As I mentioned before, none of my teachers suggested learning Linux. And as far as I'm aware, even use Linux themselves, at least not frequently. It's more than, than likely they could have done some in their careers or their degrees. Have they didn't really show an interest in it and they avoided it. So there's an analogy that I'd like to parallel with this. My best friend is absolutely terrified of spiders. Now, I've always grown up around spiders, and my dad always made me feel comfortable about spiders. However, my friend's dad is also terrified of spiders. I'll beat this. My friend's dad tried his hardest to familiarize him with spiders, so he wouldn't be scared. But this didn't help, because there was this intrinsic fear brought on by seeing someone he respected terrified of spiders. Now, I think I can... I think the same can be said for Linux and most major uses of open source. At the start, there's so much stigma around it from being elitist or really hard to just unnecessary. A lot of people think, well, I've used Windows my entire life. So is everyone else I know. There's no reason to change. And if you want to, it's just for that edgy factor. And for the most part, I'd agree. Would I ever recommend using Linux to my granddad? No, I don't think I would. However, would I recommend learning Linux to my little cousin who's just started showing an interest in computers? Of course. And I think we can all agree that when you first start with software like Linux, the learning curve is intense. The first few weeks are overwhelming, but after that, you get a feel for things, especially if you experiment with different distros, etc. And now, so more than ever, with the introductions of VMs and sandboxing, you can't really do any damage, so it takes away a lot of that fear factor. As well as the introductions of the Linux subsystems, on uh, Windows, making learning easier and more accessible to everyone. Another problem solved by the rise of VMs is the gaming aspect. A lot of people, especially younger generations, rely on gaming as their source of entertainment. I'm sure you've all played some video games at some point in your life, and you'll know that Linux doesn't make that especially easy. And that's for the games which are supported. Aside from the games you coded yourself, like the old ones you get in magazines, it makes it quite hard. And this puts a lot of people off. Plus, the monopolization over proprietary software, such as Microsoft Office. For a lot of people, this jump from using software like Word, which they've been using their entire life and is second nature to them, to even a similar equivalent like LibreOffice, which is inherently less stable and less refined, is like learning to walk again. And the fact that all of this combined into one chain of events, having to relearn all of this at the same time is too much for people. The next logical step for anyone interested in open source would be to learn Git. Git, uh, it's another thing that most people would say looks quite scary on first look. And I would say a lot of the time when students are forced to use Git, either GitLab or GitHub, they usually don't have time to learn it properly. And they don't get shown how to learn it properly. So they cheat. They do things the fastest way and what feels like the easiest way, at least short term. This was definitely the case for me. I kept telling myself that I'd go back and learn how to do everything properly through the terminal and do it all correctly. But deadline after deadline, I found myself doing things the hard way. 
And this is where I think the future of open source lies. Most modern open source projects are now solely focused around their Git environments. And while many people who can code and even code really well aren't venturing into the open source side of things because of their lack of understanding of Git. Now, this is a hard thing to do. Getting the right people involved with Git and the process of version management, committing and pulling, and all the complexities that come with but are necessities. One example of this is Hacktoberfest. For those who don't know, this is a month-long celebration of open source presented by DigitalOcean. The idea behind it is to get more people involved in Git and open source, and it's designed to be accessible to all skill levels, which introduces a small problem. The aim is to contribute a minimum of four pull requests to GitHub repos throughout the month of October. And if you complete this, you get a t free t-shirt. What isn't taken into account is the quality or necessity of these pull requests. So as you've probably worked out, it results in an almost negative effect and a spam of useless and irrelevant pull requests. However, the concept is very good for trying to get people involved. And this year, for the first time, DigitalOcean have made it so only Hacktoberfest um, verified GitHub repos are allowed to be uh, counted. They have to, it's now an opt-in feature. Um, but it's the right idea. In fact, as president of the University of Reading's tech-based society, Are You Hacking?, I will even be running my own Hacktoberfest event with a few workshops and guidance on using Git and making worthwhile com contributions, which are all welcome to attend because this year is completely virtual. Um, Personally, I think the intention is exactly what needed in the current climate. It, the motivation to learn how to use Git the is the resource that everyone needs to get into open source. It's not a case of not being able to see the benefits of open source because they're quite apparent. OK, some people are a bit cautious around open source due to security issues, be that for physical security, but most importantly, the security that the software will still be there. And there's a guarantee it won't just become unsported overnight. Also, there's this psychological fallacy to deal with of how can a piece of software be better if it's free? On top of all this, the most key factor to most people is the time it takes to learn the software and the support, the global recognition and acceptance, the portability. There's nothing worse than opening a file someone has sent you to find that it's been completely unformatted. And that's if it's readable in the first place. With so many issues ranging from minor fonts to uh, missing fonts to minor inconveniences, but it's all to do with conditioning. From the moment you start using a computer at school, everything is Windows or Microsoft Office. So that's what everyone's used to and what everyone wants. And the only way to get more people interested in open source is ideally to introduce them to it at an early age, which I think will happen. It's the next logical step. Even just for the ease of, let's say, assistance with programming homework, the amount of code readily available through public Git repos is going to bring more people into the open source world than ever before. And the free part isn't too bad either. In conclusion, I would say that open source is looking like it has an extremely bright future, with a lot of the complication of old being solved in the modern day through community efforts. Nowadays, if you need help with virtually anything, you can find the solution online through Stack Overflow or YouTube and the likes. The ease of sharing open source software through platforms such as GitHub or GitLab is revolutionary. Combined with the introductions of VMs, it removes a lot of the cons. You now have no restrictions. There's nothing to say you can't have a Linux machine in a Windows environment at the same time without the complexity of dual booting. You can experiment with different distros of Linux without having to wipe the system every time, and you can remove a lot of the risk. While I don't think we will be in a position to eradicate the monopolization placed on the computing world by Microsoft anytime soon, there's nothing to say we can't have the best of both worlds. Thank you very much. Daniel, thank you very much. I'm glad we've got you on the committee. That's an impressive performance. Um, please do ask Daniel questions um, on the chat. Um, our next lightning talk is from uh, Maxim uh, Blinov. Um, I will just uh, pop his presentation up. Um, and then... Simon, definitely. I think cloud-based software like Google Docs and Stadia is definitely low in the barrier. Um, yeah, it, it's it's not a bad thing at all. And the, the rise of Raspberry Pis, that's how I first got involved with Linux. Um, I first um, used uh, Raspbian on a, a, an old Raspberry Pi, and that's how I got involved with open source in the first place. So I think that's crucial right 
Thank you, Daniel. Um, and